Hey, what's up? This is Tyson McGuffin. I'm officially on Cameo. The holidays are coming up. If you guys want, to, want me to put together a uh, fun little shout out for maybe a uh, friend or a family member, let me know. Check out the link below. Happy holidays. What's going on, everybody? My name is Tyson McGuffin, and welcome to the McGuffin Show, bringing in the best podcast and content in pickleball. I want to thank all of our viewers for tuning in this week. I uh, want to give a big shout out to all of our sponsors as well. Uh, can't thank you guys enough. Uh, Kyle McKenzie, what's up, brother? Hey, man. How we doing? You know what? Um, I'm a little sore, but uh, yeah, <laughs> do, you know, I've I've uh, I've. I've officially gotten up seven uh, uh, seven mornings uh, in a row at 4 a.m. Got my ass Jeez. in the hot tub at 4:30. Got in the gym <laughs> at five. So no, it's been good. It's been it's been a nice little discipline week back. So it's the good type of pain. The, the, the good champions type of pain. pain, right? That's right, man. That's right. <laughs> the good hurt. Oh yeah. I oh like yeah. It. I, I like had it. I had you a couple mornings. Yep. 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 We uh we got up and grinded, and it's an hour drive for me. So it's uh, I'm not the morning person you are. So it's uh. It's, it's an extra challenge, but no, it, it's great, honestly. And I see that you've been playing with Leia the last couple mornings. It's, it, it's great that we have a core group of people who are, you know, pro level players, but also want to get up and, and put in the time. So it's hopefully going to get all of us to where we want to be. Yeah, yeah, no, it's nice. And uh, speaking of that, it's, uh, you know, Rafa's, Rafa's, uh, 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 Rafa Hewitt is, uh, is moving in Coeur d'Alene. He's actually going to be, uh, uh, living in our little side casita, so another, another ringer, another guy to kind of uh, you know add into the group, and obviously it's going to be much more consistent. So no, it's nice. You know, it's nice we have you know five kind of solid you know top twenty players um, all to kind of grind with, and and uh, you know if people want to get up early, we can train early and get it out of the way. So no, it's just nice to having to have a good little core group to be able to train with and you know travel and like support each other as well. Well, I think we we all know that you know it's a matter of time before better and better athletes are coming into the sport and and being able to compete and, and have success at the pro level so it, it's nice to feel like we have a little advantage with where we live where we have a little pocket of people to be able to train with i know there's only a few of those you know throughout the country uh, simone and and that group has has that over in florida and you know there's a few other pockets but it's nice that that we have one baby we're ready ready to go That's ready right. to get after this yeah and i think you know so much of upside and so much of getting better you know ties into your setting ties into who's around you and, and ties into if there's anybody halfway decent that that wants to grind and train with you i mean sure. so much uh so much of uh you know just i guess general like progression uh you know you you take a look at Catherine. you take a look at uh you know, who, who else has gotten a lot better? Take, take a look at Corinne, like Corinne and Adam have been together. They've been dating for the last year and a half. Corinne's game is freaking skyrocketed. You yeah, know what I mean? Huge, a, huge. Uh, take a look at Catherine, like Catherine's training with Simone every day. You know, they just started mm -hmm. doing some, uh, uh, you know, live streams with their practice. So yep, yep. I think, I think so much of that, you know, ties into obviously, uh, you know, how, how organized you want to be with, uh, with your training, but, uh, but also too, just if you have decent people around you to, to, yep. you know, play with. No, you can be crazy talented, but it's pretty tough to to get better than established people in a sport unless you're able to see that level and, and figure out what you need to work on, what you need to add to your game for sure. Yeah. Um, Rob Nunnery, another guy that yeah. uh, he's uh, down in a short down period of time. Yeah, short period of time. Yeah. He's he's a, a high end pro. Partially, obviously, credit to him for his talent and his hard work, but just being able to be in with with a high level group like that um, definitely takes you takes you there faster for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, Rob's game is definitely skyrocketed. I like Rob Nunnery, man. He's a good dude. He's, he's a nice guy, yeah, he's for sure. Dude. I haven't uh, checked out his blog, his Franklin uh, blog, but uh, 
uh, viewers out there. Uh, if you guys want to know more about Rob Nunry, uh, Rob uh, does a blog for uh, Franklin. He's a uh, sponsored by Franklin and uh, uh, anyhow, super, super cool guy. He's been, uh, he's been playing for the last year and a half. I would say he's probably in that top 20 category, um, but new upcoming ringer that, uh, sure. that has been marinating in Florida. And, <laughs> and if you marinate in, in Southern Florida, you are bound to get better. That's the place to marinate. Right? Yeah, that, that is the place to marinate. <laughs> get your ass. It's, it's too cold here to marinate. You got to <laughs> marinate in Florida. <laughs> get your ass down there. Stay in Bonita Springs for a couple of weeks. There's plenty of people down there. <laughs> Uh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So how's, um, how's the family? How's yeah, the family? no, everybody's, the uh, everybody's doing w- real well. Um, we obviously spent a couple weeks down in, in Punta Gorda with, uh, the APP masters tournament and then a couple of camps afterwards. So it was nice to get home. Not going to lie after about a week or so I was, I was missing the family pretty, pretty good. So been training since I've been back teaching a little bit, but it's, it's been nice, pretty open schedule, been able to spend some time with them. Um, playing some ping pong with, with my little man. He's getting pretty good. I might have to post a video. Um, okay. Okay. He's definitely in his ping pong training when I was gone playing with mom a little bit. So I, I uh-huh. came back and it's uh he's pretty scary. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Ripped some forehands at me. You know, when you're kind of playing with, with your son and you're kind of half paying attention and right. then every now and then it just, just comes off. screaming back. <laughs> you're like, where did that come from? So no, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. That's too funny. Hell yeah. You guys, you got, uh, you got the boys or you got the kiddos a ping pong table for, for Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then we left, you know, shortly investment. after that. And so, uh, came back and he's, he's pretty good. Wanted to play like every day, just, uh, he's, he's a junkie for it. And then today actually is my, 10th wedding anniversary to my oh, beautiful wife happy Callie. anniversary yeah, tell Callie yeah. I said happy anniversary yeah Make sure will, to tell her. So, so yeah I will I will so we're gonna maybe do like a little day hike after we finish oh, fun, here fun. and then Hell yeah. uh my it's surprise nice gift to her was uh I'm, I'm scheduled to lead a camp in Orlando uh in early April yep, and so yep. kind of created a little um family Disney World vacation uh-huh. for, for Callie and the family. Oh, so that's my, that, my little anniversary gift. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. That's, wrap that's cool. that around it there. So yeah. That's cool, man. Heck yeah. Uh, we uh, have, have you been to Disneyland? I have. Yeah. Yeah. Been yeah, to okay. Disneyland, been to Disney World once, but this Got will it. be uh, Disney World's bit of an upgrade. So it'll be. Yeah. It'll right. Be fun right. That's back. what I hear. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. We uh, took the kiddos to Disneyland two years ago. Nice. Um, uh, ended up, it was kind of a fun little trip. We ended up. I ended up playing the uh, uh, Encinitas, like Bobby Riggs tournament in June. It was like okay. that late, like that last weekend of June, played that tournament. And then we stayed in like Oceanside, which is like, I don't know, 30 miles north of uh, Encinitas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we ended up just like driving like an hour and a half north to Anaheim, spent a day at Disneyland, spent a day at uh, California Adventures. And I mm-hmm. know uh, it's fun. But anyhow, our, our, our next trip would definitely be Disney World. Yeah, I mean, I so for those that, that don't know, I have four kids. They're between the ages of, of eight and five. So I kind of figured it's the perfect time. They're kind of the perfect age to get the most out of the experience. So we're, yeah. we're pretty That's excited. Cool. That's cool, man. Heck yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, so yeah, Rafa Hewitt moving to Coeur d'Alene. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what's, your, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, Rafa's already, uh, just my opinion, Rafa's got – some of the most talent uh, of any of the the pro players. I think he's been at a disadvantage, not being able to get that consistency with, with just being able to grind. Like there's, you know, there's shot makers and then there's, you know, there's grinders and he's more of a shot maker, but at the sure. level now is, is getting to the point where you have to be able to do a certain amount of grinding to be able to get through those, those high level players and those uh, high level matches. So I think if he's able to get, you know, fitter, uh, have that consistency playing with you and, and, yeah. you know, the rest of us, uh, sky's the limit for his game, honestly. Yeah. So it's a fun little tip for the viewers. That's so true. There are workhorses <laughs> and there are freaking shot makers, baby. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you for know, sure. uh, um, but yeah, you, no, you've, would... you've always been, you, how would you classify yourself? Yeah. Well, and, Where would you put yourself? And, and I, I, I think once you kind of get to a certain level, if you don't have everything, then, then you, then you're, you're you probably should be at that level. Um, right, but, right. uh, um, yeah, I would say that my, my true inner self is like a straight dog yeah. who, just, who wants to freaking <laughs> gut matches out and, and just win the tough way. Right. But there's also a, 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 a big part of me where I'm getting a little older. I'd like to, uh, speed up a bit more, go for more on the serve, go for more on the drive, plain and simple. I don't want to have to grind my life away and, and, uh, take the, take the detour route. So, yeah, I mean, anytime that I can cut corners or anytime that I can just take pressure off myself and find some different ways to, 
uh, uh, you know, create some more offense or take some pressure off off my back. Uh, that is right, necessary right, for sure. But, yeah. Uh, so at your core, you're kind of the the grinder and the workhorse. But yeah, at your level, you've realized you've had to add in some weapons or some variety. For sure. Yeah. And yeah. there's just there's just only so much you can do when when you're just putting balls in play and you only grind. You know, I think uh, yeah. um, you kind of have to have that other slice of maybe taking taking a little risk, but taking calculated risk. Um, but you know, I think that classifies as, uh, being a, being a shot maker, whether it's off your right. back foot or off a speed up or whatever. Um, right. but, uh, you know, something that you referenced that, that I'd never really thought of for pickleball. Um, you said, you know, getting older <laughs> a little bit, right. And your style yeah. is obviously one of the most physical styles. When I think about, you know, what Federer did towards the end of his career of, you know, obviously Bang. a guy who could win every, every way, but as he started getting into, you know, mid thirties, uh, he started shortening the points intentionally yeah. a little bit more uh, mm-hmm. in order to have that longevity. So it'd be interesting to see, you know, guys like, like Matt, Wright, You know, elite doubles players who are getting, you know, be in their forties, you know, as yeah. the standard becomes early twenties and mid twenties, will we see some people looking to shorten the points up a little bit more um, just because of uh, legs and, and physicality? Right. And hey, hey, uh, uh, this is this is not on topic at all. But uh, uh, I just I, I just got a PayPal request, and it looks like somebody just paid three ninety nine for a Kyle McKenzie camp in Orlando. Well, look out! I, look at that! <laughs> it only took me five minutes, right? Gave people a shout out. Are we? You're welcome. Are we live? Are You're we live welcome right to now? join me and the family in Disney World too. That's included we, with the three ninety nine. <laughs> we must be live. We must be live. I love it. <laughs> That's that is that's classic. That is classic. Oh gosh. Oh, just uh, so, no, uh, just uh, physicality, physicality yeah, of the game, right. and and maybe as as guys get older, to right, be mid thirties, right. forties, you know, still have the ability. You might look to speed up a little bit more or, or use the hand speed if 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 grinding, yeah, you know, isn't isn't the way to do it all day long. And you, uh, but you know, take a look at Matt Wright. Matt Matt Wright's obviously looking to flip stuff and and sure. clean up clean up with his hands uh yeah. you know who, who else is kind of in that category i mean i would say steve steve is still a freaking workhorse at heart right. and i would right. if i was in steve's shoes i would find more ways to create offense and not freaking grind so much because uh <laughs> right. uh and i mean the, the guy is talented and he, and he can do everything but right. uh obviously with new upcoming studs coming in the game i mean gosh if you're in your mm-hmm. 40s and you're trying to put and you're, and you're trying to dink you know uh, 10 to 15 balls every single point and you're trying to end up in a metal match, you know, late in the day. I mean, it's going to be tough. I think it's tough for him though, because I, I think Steve's kind of like you where, you know, That's the true. way he, no. whether the yeah, way no. he beats people is consistency right. percentages, you know, keeping his, his composure and his temperament and just kind of allowing people to self implode. So, right. you know, to sprinkle in, that's my, my favorite word, just sprinkle in the, uh, give a little sprinkle in the offense. Right. Oh yeah. It, obviously he's capable of doing uh. it super talented, but it's, it's a fine line of, of learning to win a new way or going against what you've had so much success with. Right. It's, and it's and trying to find a new way to win at, like oh, sure. at, at, at this level late in the game. I mean, it's <laughs> tough thing to do. I, I, yeah. I mean, a uh, uh, prime example is like, I'm trying to make a paddle switch and I'm, I'm still a little, a little iffy about the paddle, you know, right, like right. I'm not even, not even changing my game. I'm just changing the stupid paddle. Uh, right. come, well, you come built to, so come, much trust in, in a certain paddle and, you yeah, know, in right. big moments, you know how it's going to react and it's something and, to be said for that. And something to be said with building trust with select patterns and building trust with like, you know, your true inner self. And, yeah. uh, you know, so yeah, for someone like a Steve and I, I mean, I'm feel like I've, uh, 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 you know, I, I probably have more offense than Steve, but, uh, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's tough. Like my, my, my true inner self would, would rather beat people by just seeing them suffer. And, and that physical game style of putting balls in play and of being a true counterattacker. Uh, so uh, yeah, just any, any new changes when like you've been successful and you reached a level and you thought that level was pretty high. Mm-hmm. It's tough to swallow that stuff down and uh, add some new stuff, you know? Well, I think that that's why it's so important, you know, at the pro level now to, to always be training, always be adding stuff because, you know, it seems like every other tournament you realize, you know, you see a shot that you haven't seen before, you see a style and you just, it's almost like you're seeing that the game uh, slowly transform right, right in front of your eyes, tournament after tournament. So it's exciting, but yeah. it definitely, uh, if you're trying to stay at that level or compete at that level and win at that level, it, it makes you, it makes you put that into your training for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Shout out to Steve Deacon. I feel like we've talked about Steve a couple times in this. So podcast. yeah, funny. Fu- so I was chatting with Steve actually at uh, at the APP Masters, and uh, I think somebody 
threw out a little nickname and I don't know if it's official, but it, it should be podium Steve podium Steve because of his I think, consistency. I think that was Adam stone. Stone's Adam got a freak. There. Stone's okay. got a nickname for everybody. You know, <laughs> t- talking about Adam stone. So did you get a chance to watch uh, 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 cooking in the kitchen with Corinne and Adam? So I didn't know that. Did they air their first episode? I've seen they, the, they've, they they've aired it, it up, but and, I haven't seen it yet. Oh yeah. They aired oh, yeah. it. And Hey, guess, guess how many nicknames Corinne has. Okay, let, let's hear it. How, how well, many? Uh, I, let's see so how if, if I can name them all, but okay. uh, <laughs> uh, the professor. Professor, I knew that one. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, prof. Um, prof. I kind of, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. You blank it. Oh, I, we got to have I was, Adam I was on watching, here. I was watching last night. Um, I, 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 the professor, the uh, uh, princess of pickleball. That's definitely oh, one. Go. There was five of them. I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, um, uh, Adam was great. Uh, um, yeah, Adam's Adam's always good and super that, entertaining that. guy. Yeah, he yeah. is. He is. Just he, put a camera a, on him and just enjoy. Put a, put a camera on him. He's got a, he's got a pretty slick tongue and he's pretty clever. So uh, yeah, super nice. But anyways, so uh, I was talking with Steve, um, yep. podium Steve, as Adam would call it. Uh, he said his percentage. He calculated it, and I don't know if this is recent or at one point, but uh, percentage of the time that he podiumed was like 92.5% or something just crazy. Now, a lot of those, he, he had to say a lot of those Woo! were were second and thirds, right? Not a lot of, he, of, he of, of victories. He lost to you a few times, yeah. But uh, pretty pretty dang impressive. Almost, yeah, a, yeah. almost yeah. a 93% rate of, of finding the podium. And he did it with a lot of different partners, too, yeah, which no, no, no. Uh, so shows how much of a study it's is. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. No, when you're consistently doing it with somebody else it's uh it's definitely not an easy task um yeah kudos to steve lots of respect for steve uh, uh um i know we uh we didn't we didn't get into it uh in the winner's bracket final but there was a there was a tight line call made steve know that know that we're all good you know i uh uh i've i've gotten past it I may have dropped the f bomb. <laughs> I I I may you, have dropped. No, <laughs> not you. Come bastard. I may have uh, dropped the f bomb a couple times, but Steve, know that it was all love, brother. It was. You all know, I love. think, and you guys, you know, high level competitors, you guys oh, have yeah. all been there before. Uh, you know, I've seen it. Steve get heated, at, at feeling like a line call didn't go his yeah, way, right. and, and vice right. versa. And so. it, it what didn't even really get heated. It was just no, a big, no, no, no. big time yeah. in the match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Uh, yeah, not 92 what? 92 point. I think I, I thought it was 92.5. I could be off, but that was if memory 92 serves five. me right. It was something ridiculously high. Ridiculously uh, high. That's cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, something else in the works. Uh, there's a new facility in North Spokane. It's called the Pickleball Playground. This is our first little shout out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pickleball Playground is going to be opening next week. Uh, uh, Kyle McKenzie, we will, uh, Kyle, Kyle McKenzie will, will, uh, be the head pro there. So we kind of be running all the programming, uh, yep, yep. uh when he's, when he's home, it's probably going to be more part-time because he's going to be on the road playing tournaments and teaching for me. But, uh, uh, anyhow, so yeah, at, uh, uh, five indoor courts, uh, phase one, phase one essentially is just five indoor courts. It's mm-hmm. a huge building. It's on like three acres, uh, but five indoor courts, two bathrooms, um, you know, we're going to run uh, uh, programming with like pickleball 101, 102, maybe like a 103 class. We'll run some leagues. Uh, uh, one Saturday a month, we're going to run a little uh, uh, one day round robin tournament for all the members and stuff like that or for non members. But uh, uh, yeah, just another facility to have, another facility to teach at, and then also to a, a good spot for us to do all of our video work at. Yeah, it's exciting to to have something like that, you know, in our in our backyard here, and uh, we'll see, you know, where it where it goes. It's got a little cornhole action too, so I think oh, it's yeah. it's it's not exactly a chicken and pickle, but a little bit of that feel where you know pickleball is a huge part of it or the main part of it, but there's some other uh, activities as well to to bring the community in, and so uh, I'm excited. Just hopefully that'll help facilitate even more growth for the sport here, and and yeah, more right. uh, beginners or people that haven't heard of it, haven't tried it yet, uh, just uh, be willing to give it a shot as we all know it's very very addictive once you uh once you catch the bug (laughs) uh and that facility is pretty close to you huh it's 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 only like five minutes from my house so um the more often i can get you driving over to me Uh that'll be a little hidden Uh bonus (laughs) (laughs) hey for for the longest time i came to north i know for for a solid (laughs) a solid year and a half i know it is such a pain in the ass like an hour there an hour back no it sucks no, it, well, it's, it's, it's not as bad in the morning, right? Cause it's not like in the heart of your day, you yeah, right, kind of get right. the drive out of the way and you for know, sure, you still have, 
we still have, you know, get home at, you know, 10 a.m. or yeah, 11 a.m. Right. You still have your full day to get stuff done. But uh, yeah. Can't we all just live five minutes from each other? I mean, That'd be a God. lot easier. What the hell? And what, and what people do to, to get a decent game in pickleball, you know? Um, no for sure an yeah, hour but, probably is below average for a lot of people I, I, for I driving would, for you know what i mean i would assume yes i would assume i would assume especially with how there's you know limited facilities nationwide people yeah. have to travel all over so yeah no, no no i would assume that that average travel time is probably anywhere from like an hour to two hours <laughs> um okay so uh camp corner um uh as as kyle mentioned uh just got back from puna gorda ran uh, uh a couple successful two-day camps uh all level specific had a great time and um uh anyhow so we have some stuff coming up the uh next tournament we have coming up is world pickleball championships we uh, uh don't have any camps um around world pickleball championships but the end of the month the uh, uh first ppa tournament of the year uh it's at the jw marriott uh, we are running a camp on that Monday, Tuesday after level specific. Uh, I believe we already have 12 signups. We're oh, nice. um, yeah. Yeah. So we, few so more spots, have, few more spots, a few more spots should have some, should have some good numbers. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we'll have a, we'll have a number of uh, high level pros there teaching. Uh, so if anybody's interested or if anybody's uh, playing that PPA tournament in Phoenix, and maybe you want to add a, a, a camp experience onto your uh, PPA tournament, you could go to TysonMcGuffin.com and get signed up. Also, too, uh, our next camp after that, we're going to be in Wichita at the, uh, I guess you can call it like the headquarter chicken and pickle location. Mm -hmm. That was that was the first location. Uh, but uh, Mr. McKenzie and I will be there March 3rd and 4th. Uh, same deal, level specific camp. Um, and you can get signed up at TysonMcGuffin.com. I'm pretty excited. I have, I've watched tournaments, obviously very aware of chicken pickle, but I have not been uh, to a chicken and pickle yet. So uh, pretty excited to see what it's all about in person. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, Kyle just recently got um, IPTPA certified. So, uh, so he's, he's ready to rock and roll at those chicken and pickle locations. Let's do it. Let's you do know, it. Hey, hey, had to get that certification, <laughs> you know, I had to get certified, baby. I've jumped through a hoop or two in my day. I don't oh, mind yeah. it. I don't oh, mind yeah. it. <laughs> Um, okay. So, uh, topics, uh, topics for this episode. So we're going to talk about first strike pickleball. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to talk about how, uh, just the, the new modern game is, is kind of, uh, it's kind of evolving to that. We're going to, uh, reference the, uh, three finals from the, uh, APP Puna Gorda tournament and kind of how first strike pickleball, uh, took place in all three of those finals. And then also too, we will get into our nugget of the week. So Mr. McKenzie, give me the scoop on first strike pickleball, brother. So, yeah, I mean, uh, um, watching, uh, going down and playing the APP Masters, uh, I think maybe we'll just talk about all three finals. You were in the finals for, for mixed, you're in the finals for men's, and you're in the finals for uh, Obviously, you know, I teach pickleball for a living, play at the pro level. I think the people that know me well know I'm kind of a geek for the strategy and the tactics and to see uh, the inner workings of the gameplay. And the thing that stood out to me, granted it was windy, um, but in all three events, um, teams matchups that maybe traditionally would be more of the patient type or work the point a little bit more or be a little bit more inclined to dink. Um, it seemed like on both sides of the net in every one of those finals, um, each uh, team or person innately felt like they needed to get the first strike in the point, meaning uh, serving was more aggressive. Uh, the percentage of the play, uh, the time that people were driving the third shot, I thought was way higher than what we've seen in, in other tournaments. And um, I think this is the trend of what we're going to see more and more. I think rather than going with the mentality of feeling like uh, you need to play the soft game or, or soften right from the get go, I think what teams are realizing is they can wail on the first shot and they're athletic enough and they have good enough touch and feel that if they need to soften or slow things down from there, they have the ability to, but it seems like each team is, is trying to play the point on their terms right out of the gate. Um, mm -hmm. I think in mixed doubles, let's talk about, it. I mean, obviously you playing with Lee waters, uh, the waters have the reputation of playing more of that bang, bang style and playing it very effectively. But Corinne, as far as I know, has had more reputation of being more of a counter puncher and more of a grinder. And 
Uh, I don't know if this is a personal choice in her game or just in general, the way the game's going, but it seemed like she was willing to get in there with, with Lee and yeah. initiate and, and, and play a lot more of those, those fast hand exchanges yeah. um, that she was initiating and starting. So I, I don't know what you felt out there. Obviously you were. Yeah. That. Well, I, I, I think uh, you definitely hit the, hit the nail on the head there, but uh, you know, something that we always talk about in our camps is most attackers don't like to be attacked or most mm, attackers right. don't like yeah. offense coming at them. So, you know, take a look at Corinne. Corinne, I think uh, uh, her true identity, her her true inner self is is probably uh, playing safe and being a true counterattacker. But um, I don't know if you know if Adam is uh, uh, you know uh, uh, giving giving her some extra advice or 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 just like in the last year and a half, Adam Adam has been telling her to uh, be more aggressive as they've been training more. But plain and simple, yeah, I mean she took it yep. to Lee. She ended up beating Lee head to head pretty mm -hmm. consistently and she ended up going first. And so I think that's a, that, that paints a pretty that, good that picture. That was what surprised me. Yeah. Yeah. It paint, paints a pretty good picture that, uh, um, that even though Corinne, uh, her true identity is probably a counterattacker, she ended up going first and going with, going with a pattern that she's probably not as comfortable with, but maybe knew that if she went first, then she could beat Lee head to head versus if Lee goes first, mm -hmm. Lee wins a higher percentage of points. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I right. think yeah. um uh you know and I, I I think in all three of those finals and especially in that mixed final, whoever went first obviously was probably winning the point, let's say sixty to seventy five percent of the time. Um, um right. you know, I, I think I think uh Corinne did a great job of driving thirds, getting her third down. Adam was crashing uh, was crashing off of that. Um, you know, so uh uh you know it's kind of funny like we you know we uh talk about uh, you know adam and deckel and you know steve and his partner but there's there's so many men's teams that are super offensive with the drive and crash and then once they get to the kitchen line they're yeah. you know they're just true true counter attackers um and, and it kind of seemed like yeah. at the app everybody was driving but just once they got to the kitchen line uh they were uh using more offense and they weren't being uh, you know, I guess as safe. And so, yeah, it, it, it just seemed like maybe, maybe it was like because of the temperature and it was a lot colder, the ball's moving a little faster, you know, you kind of have to play with the temperature and stuff like that. But, uh, but no, I would say that the teams that were successful were the teams that were uh, playing first strike pickleball, shoving it down your throat, being super aggressive, not only from the baseline, but once they got up, they were, you know, looking to create and try to find some offense. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's all, I mean, kind of taking that to the, to the final of, of you and Andre, you know, against Steven Adam, uh, Steven Adam, traditionally, you know, very much those counter punching type uh, type teams, obviously they'll drive third balls quite often, but even from the kitchen line, I saw Steve speed up and try to go through yeah. Andre a little bit more, M much more he for sure. was battling a little bit of an injury. So I don't know how much of that was factored into to pulling the trigger a little bit earlier, right. but still, it just felt like the, the level of those points where you're expecting those long 20, 30 ball dink rallies, especially with as tight as those that match was. And as, as close as th that match was, it didn't seem like we saw that to the same degree that we have, right. It yeah. seemed like teams were much more willing to, to initiate, and get in those fast hand exchanges and then and then your match with with zane in the finals and singles it, it wasn't that you were beat or or that either of you were trying to outdo either one with cat and mouse and both of you have a pretty solid cat and mouse ability yeah. in game but it seemed like the recipe was going bigger on the serve bigger on the forehand just looking to uh to play more on your terms take more risk uh early in the point yeah yeah you know speaking about the uh, uh men's men's final Andre and I were down three eleven in game three or in the uh, game of 15. And, yeah. and I would say like, I really pumped the gas from there. I started to try to slide middle more. I started to uh, yeah. just try to be a, a bigger presence in the middle, try to use more forehand dinks, go inside out with it and get some liftings and then try to speed up from there. But uh, I would say that I, I don't know if I surprised Adam or Steve or, or, or just my level was simply better, but um I think with me turning the knob, creating more offense, kind of late in that game of 15, I was winning a large majority of hand speed battles and I was winning a large majority of points because I went first. Um, you yeah. Know, so, yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's what you've been working on too. Yeah. You know? for it's sure. it's it what yeah. you spent the previous month. I mean, obviously your soft game and your dink game from the kitchen, your ability to, to counteract other spins, I think is, there's not going to be a lot of people maybe ben does that better than you i don't right, know but right. there's not a lot of people that do but i thought the difference was once you got that more defensive dink 
you were able to initiate and play on your terms from there, which has probably been kind of the missing piece if there's been anything missing in yeah. your game at the highest right. level. So right. had to felt felt pretty good to get through that one down 311. Yeah, no, uh, no, for sure. It's funny it, too for me watching because I could tell, you know, Andre was struggling a little bit physically and, right. you know, he's got more reach. And I think he's more comfortable playing the left. For sure. But you're, you're a little more seasoned right now too. Right, so right, right. I could see in those conversations without actually hearing it, I knew you wanted to be on that strong side, but he wanted to maybe just for comfortability too. Yeah, right, so right, right. ultimately I think you guys traded off a little, but yeah. I, I think you mostly played the left and, and that was the, the difference to get you guys over the hump. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was going to ask you in the, in the match with Zane, obviously yep. it got a ton of exposure, but uh, what are your thoughts, you know, on the Zane serve? I mean, you're the one who had to, yeah. had to return it, had to feel you know, the power the shape. What, what, what were your thoughts on, on playing against it? Um, the, when, when the ball hit the ground, it was like Bambi on ice. If you, if you know <laughs> what I mean, <laughs> I mean, I like that analogy. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, it was so, um, it was just slippery. Like it, it, it wasn't a true bounce. It was either kicking up into my neck or like kicking out. Uh, yeah. I think I may have whiffed, I don't know, one return, two returns. <laughs> I think only one, <laughs> one, um, but, so uh, it's the shape. Yeah. yeah, no gain of 15. Um, you know, Zane's dad said it the best. We were uh, getting our medals at the, uh, podium and, and Zane's dad came up to me and he's like, Hey, he's like, by the way, He's like, that's the best Zane's ever played. And he's like, I told Zane after you beat him two and seven, I'm like, dude, you just got to go for broke. And so, uh, <laughs> and, and it's, it's, it's uh, very true. I mean, Zane uh, served super aggressively. I mean, no, no discredit to, to Zane at all. He definitely should have, should have beat me. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he served super aggressively, used the forehand well. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and was able to kind of uh, find that next notch in that gain of 15. I ended up missing seven or eight returns. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was one of those, uh, you know, we, we talk about this a lot in practice and in camps and stuff like that. It was one of those things where I felt so much pressure, uh, on my return that I was, I was leaving home so early. And I think this is, this is a great little tip for the viewers. Hmm. Um, when you feel pressure, um, yeah. And, and maybe you feel pressure when somebody speeds up at you, or maybe you feel pressure because somebody's being super aggressive with their serve and their drive, right? Plain yeah. and simple. When I feel uncomfortable, when I'm at the kitchen line and somebody's speeding up, I, I leave ready position too early, or I, I leave home way too early. And I don't, uh, or I, I end up guessing and I usually don't guess the right way. So plain and yeah. simple, when I'm uncomfortable from the kitchen line and somebody's speeding up, I, I uh, don't, uh, don't stay in ready position. I don't stay home long enough. When my hands are feeling really good, I can watch the speed up. The ball is super big. I can watch the ball in detail, but I'm staying home as long as I can. And I'm not so premature. So speaking of Zane on the serve, um, I was leaving home so early and I was so focused on him hitting his third ball as I was right. hitting my goddamn return that, <laughs> that with that, with that being said, I wasn't hitting my return clean. Cause I was moving. I was thinking right. ahead uh so uh uh tip well, mess with you, your contact point right? yeah you're no, moving, no, right you're moving right you're moving as you're hitting the shot yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, my my uh uh my my best uh best serve return is when i can stay home i can let the ball come to me i can keep my feet still i can get turned i can get my hands organized uh so there's something to be said with staying home not leaving so early not being so premature with your positioning not being so premature with your hands you have more time than you think and it's funny because i tell my students that all day long and i freaking <laughs> uh, do it myself god damn it practice what you preach god practice what you <laughs> preach so so um, kind of talking about the serve talking about that match um you know zane serves kind of unique uh, you know with with flicking it and for the viewers who didn't see it basically he flicks the serve uh, tosses it. And when he tosses it, he tosses it with backspin. And so the idea is then when he uh, attacks the serve, um, he can attack it with a lot of topspin and actually increase the revolutions or the amount of topspin that he gets because he's counteracting the, the backspin in the toss. So what it does is it allows him to hit out as far as 
uh, pace and, and, and swing speed, but also it increases the, uh, the amount of top spin and the shape that he can get uh, on the serve. So um, we've got that serve or that type of serve going forward, which, which I could see growing in popularity, but yeah. also the, the, the drop serve um, kind of, what are your thoughts on the drop serve? What uh, do you see a lot of people using that? Or are you planning yeah. to use it? What do you think? So I think uh, first and foremost, speaking on camps and speaking on just, you know, uh, low, lower levels, being more cooperative in camps, helping people uh, with, you know, yips on their serve. Uh, something we always say in camps, something that I get very uh, uh, sick of saying in camps is that we always tell our campers in order for the teacher student drilling to work, the teacher has to be very cooperative with their feed. And so when you feed, it has to be off the bounce. So uh, uh, that right there, like I've seen a, a 3.0's feed go from a 1.5 to a 3.0 feed <laughs> in, a, in a matter of one ball because they can feed off the bounce and they have more right. time. It's easier. So, yeah. yeah, so I think for like the masses and for, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean you've, 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 you uh, teach camps, obviously, and you taught for Level Up last year. I mean, there's, there's a decent amount of people who just can't put, you know, can't put the serve in, have gifts yeah. in the serve. Maybe it's mental, maybe it's technique oriented. Uh, yeah technique oriented maybe it's a uh, uh, you know something with their ball toss but all in all uh uh i'm pretty sure that the usapa is going about pickleball in a way where they want it to be so easy to play right yeah. and so i'm pretty sure with this new rule change uh they are just allowing people to uh, uh i guess to take a little pressure off their serve be able to bounce it have more time all in all, it's it's gonna help. It's gonna help camp companies. It's gonna help camp companies uh, in their in their drilling segments. It's gonna help lower level players put the serve in, and and I I, I think at the top level, it's gonna really enhance a lot of these uh, high level players. To um, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna enhance their serve, which is gonna enhance their third. Um, mm -hmm. So I think all in all, we're gonna start seeing a lot of uh, higher level players. Uh, maybe start, maybe starting to look to uh, dictate more on the serve, which can, uh, you know, put him, put, you know, put him like in a position to find a forehand plain and simple. I just think people are going to uh, try to do more on the serve and try to dictate on the serve and try to get some sort of gain out of that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's interesting. I, uh, I think you can do a lot more with your serve. You can shape the serve a lot more. You know, there's obviously much more variety with, with not having to make contact, you know, below four o'clock. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, interesting little, little, uh, piece to add in. That's for sure. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's tough to know. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll admit I'm kind of waiting for somebody to really figure out exactly yeah. how to do it. And then I'm just going to copy them to be honest with you. Like, right. I'm just going to let somebody else be a pioneer, yeah. study it and just copy. Cause it, it does feel like, like I've, you know, we've, we've played a little and, and you've been working on the drop serve and. And yes, it's faster when you hit yours, but I, I don't feel as much pressure in a way because I, I, I the trajectory, the, the trajectory isn't, is different. It's flatter. And so we touched, talked about Zane serve and one of the most challenging things about it being not just the speed, but the shape. And I feel like the drop serve, when you take it, like the way you're hitting it, you're taking it on the rise. I feel like it creates a bigger ball where it's faster, but it is a flatter shot. So from a yeah. returning standpoint, I feel like if I just get exceptionally low with my right. body position, right, right. just right. make sure I get under it. It doesn't have the same uh, pressure as, as your spinning or, or top spin serve but it's tough to say. I mean, it's faster. So in a way my, my returns will likely be shorter, but at the same time, how often can people redline it without, without missing, right? Can they make yeah, nine no, out of 10? Yeah, exactly. Is it only eight out of 10? Um, and how right. aggressive do you want to be in doubles? I mean, it's not tennis where you right. get two serves, right? So right. I'm kind of waiting to see if somebody really nail it, really find and that, master that can master that consistent aggression. And well, are they, you know, are they taking it on the rise? Are they letting that ball come up to the apex and descend a little. I think if you let it descend a little, you can create a little bit more shape off yeah. the bounce, but uh, you know, it's, it's going to change the game for sure. Um, yeah. It's just a matter of how, how it'll change it. Also what we haven't talked about is those, maybe, maybe somebody will master that heavy, heavy angle short serve off the bounce a little bit more, right. which I think could, could matter maybe more in singles. If you can get the returner moving laterally um, that can open up some passing shot angles uh, you know, on your first strike in singles, I don't see it being used maybe as much in, in doubles with that, with that short angle, but, right. um, it'll be exciting, you know, time will tell how much it'll change it, but I definitely think we're going to see some, uh, some people experiment with it.
Yeah. I, um, yeah, I mean, I think you think you uh, hit the nail on the head again. I, uh, yeah, I, I just have a hard time. Yeah. I mean, just like what you said, you know, with, with me making contact off the bounce when it's, when it's still rising. Um, yeah. I just, I don't trust it because it's not heavy enough. The margin for error is so slim. It, it's small, why, yeah. yeah. Why I like my serve out of the air is because I can get more shape. I can get more dance. I can swing more free and then trust, you know, trust the idea of, you know, if I just touch the back of the ball and kiss the back of the ball and I'm going up on it, I can get plenty of spin and I can trust, trust that that, that spin will, uh, you know, dip towards the end. But yeah, just like the right. serve off the bounce, I'm just not getting the same effect with, with the amount of RPMs or I'm not getting under it, but all in all, it's, it's tough for me. Cause I've been so successful with my serve out of the air for so long. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like the idea for a little bit. I, 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 thought I could go out of the air on the right off the bounce on the left. And over, over the last week that I've been home, I, the, the, the first two days that I was here, I like kind of tinkered with it. The last three days I said, screw it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so happen I am, yet. I am right back to old faithful banging that thing <laughs> out of the air, uh, hitting it bigger than ever. Well, yeah, like I said, I, it'll be interesting, you know, as, as these tournaments start, which, which people are just going to full on go for it. You know, which, yeah, right. which of the pros are just going to say, this is my new serve. I'm committing to it. So like I said, I'm, I'm playing the waiting game, waiting for somebody else to master it. And, and I will, I will steal, okay. <laughs> I'll steal their stuff. Uh, give me your instruction on nugget. Okay. Okay. So uh, my, my coach's tip uh, for the week is be self-aware. So be self-aware about your own game. That's really, really underrated. Good strategy is built first around understanding what you do well, what you like to do, where you're comfortable on the court, where you're uncomfortable. And from there, really what you're trying to do as a competitor is try to structure more of those points to be the type or the style that you are comfortable or that, that cater to your weapons. But again, there's no real way to do that if you don't know what you like to do or what you do well. And, and it's okay to acknowledge limitations. We all have them to some degree. And so trying to structure your points to hide your limitations and enhance your strengths uh, is, is critical, but you have to know what you do well and what you struggle with. I like that. I like that. Something you always say is uh, know your identity. Yep. Know, know, your, know your identity ident as a player. Know your, yep. know your identity, whether, whether you're an attacker, whether you're a counterattacker, or, or, you know, maybe it's more, you know, as, as a doubles team, are you, are you the tactician yep. or are you the, right. are you, are you the cheerleader? Uh, yeah. And there's and there's a lot of people who just under pressure. And, and, and I don't know. Maybe 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 this is a little piece of it. But in in rec play, when there's no pressure, you know they can they can act as a tactician. But under pressure, maybe maybe they're just not able to see things clearly, or or yeah. uh, you know they just they just don't have that same skill set because they're feeling pressure, whatever. Right. Um, but uh, no, like that. Uh, so something I'm going to talk about. We we already kind of talked about it is. Uh, Staying home. I think, I think yeah. there's a, there's a, a shit ton of value with this idea. And this, and this idea carries into every little fundamental in pickleball. Um, uh, I'm going to start out by saying viewers, you have so much more time than you think. Uh, and, and, and even, even for my own game, uh, when I, when I'm, uh, you know, uh, when I'm in like a high level metal match, still I'm telling myself, Hey, there's little glimpse in, or there's little, glimpses where I have more time than I think, or there's little moments where I have more time than I think. So even at my level, right. you know, under pressure, when, when, when like the going gets tough, I still feel like I don't have time or I still try to rush. And so that's, that's always like a reminder for me, but, uh, uh, something I know, and, and this is a true panic button. I'm pretty sure this is a true panic button all across the world is when you feel pressure, you feel like you have no time and you want to get things done super quick. Uh, and you, and you want to, you want to leave home uh, early, whether that's leaving home with your ready position or that's leaving home on the return, or uh, uh, maybe, maybe that's leaving home as you hit a dink and like you're, you're, I see, I see a lot of people, they get pulled out of position and, and, and maybe they're losing the dinking battle cross court, but since they're feeling pressure and they get pulled out wide as they're hitting their dink, they're, they're so, uh, uh, they're thinking like a step ahead and they're so focused on their opponent's dink that they're, that they're moving and like trying to recover as they hit their dink back yeah. cross court. Yeah. I think there's a, there's another good example of uh, yeah, just not staying home or not staying like in that um, you know, in like that solid position 
Um, but there's so much value in understanding that you have more time than you think. And then when you can recognize that, I kid you not, the ball should be a little bigger. You should feel more comfortable, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, and usually, usually when, when the ball gets a little bigger, I have more time. I have more time to get organized. Then the court gets a little bigger and all in all, I can just, I can find my best stuff when I'm in that mode. Right. Um, right. You know, you know, one thing, and, and maybe not in, in every scenario, sp- but specifically with like third shot drops or anything in transition. Same idea. You know, yeah. I always tell people you have to stop and assess. And when you see that, see them moving too early or running through their swing, they're assuming that when they hit their shot, whether it be a drop, you know, a, a third shot drop or a fifth shot drop in transition, they're assuming that they're just going to put it in the kitchen and then just scurry right on up. What I tell my students is you don't know, you might pop that ball up. You know, and and it's not the end of the world, but you're just going to have to stay back for one and play defense for a little bit longer. So uh, a good tip for everybody, make sure that you focus on executing the shot first before you uh, get antsy and start thinking about your next shot. Who, who pops thirds up high? I mean, get, get, get out of here. Not anybody I stay friends with. Yeah, that's, right, yeah, that's right. That's right. I only hang out with people who keep yeah. their shit down. They're they, off my contact list. That's they're right. Yeah, they're, they're not on my speed <laughs> dial. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, but but that's a that's a uh, another great example. Like if if your opponents are being super aggressive with their fourth and their sixth and their eighth, that could put you in a position where as you're hitting your drop, you're so focused on them being aggressive with their fourth that right. you're either moving or or you're doing something goofy with your wrist because you're just all in all when you feel pressure, you could leave home early. It could cause technique issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it could. It could simply just be in your head. I mean, it could, it, there's there's so many variables there that that pressure pressure can do. Um, but uh, okay, well, hey, one I want to thank our viewers here. Um, uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe and turn on those notifications. Okay, like, subscribe, and turn on those turn on those, on those notifications. Uh, and make sure you guys subscribe to the MacGuffin Pickleball Club on YouTube. Uh, want to thank all of our sponsors this week. Um, and uh, Mr. McKenzie, any uh, ending words here, brother? No, man, just uh, appreciate uh, appreciate doing these with you. Always a good time. Sorry to everybody if we geeked out too much, but uh, it, it, it's exciting for us to see where the game's going and, and always try to figure out uh, any little edge that we can get. And uh, I guess uh, next tournament, we will the drop serve will be, be usable, right? So, uh, yeah. Yep. World pickleball, we might see a couple guys uh, roll that out. So we'll see. We'll see how effective it is. See who can master that. Who can master it in tournament? Kyle's one. gonna steal it. <laughs> I'm gonna steal it away. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so next week we're gonna be uh, uh, back here. Uh, we'll be talking about World Pickleball Championships. We'll uh, uh, geek out some more. And uh, uh, so make sure you guys tune in next week. Uh, in closing, here, uh, be real. Have a good day. My name is Tyson McGuffin. This is the McGuffin Show. We'll see you guys later. See you guys.